Hey everybody, it's Cody, Dixon RC here. Welcome to week seven of the budget build comp edition featuring the Sendero SE. Uh, as you saw last week, we put the boom muscle winch in along with the little fairly kit they have that comes with all the stuff that you can run line. Pretty simple deal. I hope that worked out okay for you if you decided to go that route. It's actually a really good way to do that and that thing works very well also. This week's going to be a simple one. Um, uh, I, there's a lot of things, little things I want to do to this. I've kind of changed the trajectory of how this truck is going to go. Originally, I was going to go different body. I was going to do chassis rails, the whole thing. That was going to be the end goal. I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. And the reason being is you'll see in a couple of weeks when I put out some other stuff. But I think my idea is to keep this truck stock rails, maybe go to a different i don't know what i'm gonna do yet uh, either way this body's gonna stay uh this style body i'm not gonna go to a compy body the idea is that you've bought this truck for 299 and you're gonna go do competitions with it i kind of like the idea of keeping this body here i do have another one that i'm gonna paint a different color that's probably gonna be the end of it we may do a roll bar we may put the grill in it to put some lights in it you know stuff like that still kind of give it a scale-ish look there's a couple other things I want to put links on this. I've got to find out if uh, I've got some for Club 5, from Club 5. They're like an eight-link setup. I don't know if it's the correct wheelbase. Of course, they, they won't even answer my email to tell me if it is or not. So who knows? We're going we're gonna to try it, though. I think so. So this week, we're going to put brass knuckles on. In uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I had become a SSD dealer. Um, or, excuse me, I had gotten my first SSD order. I've been a dealer with SSD for quite some time, but have never been able to get an order in coming from England and the way they do their payments. It was just weird, so I never got a chance to do it. But I uh, have since become a distributor through A-Main, so I have a ton more different things, options available to me now. SSD was one of them, so I jumped on and got a ton of SSD stuff, so be sure and check it out on DixlandRC.com. I got tons of stuff on there with more coming. Uh, so this week we're going to do the SSD brass knuckles from well, SSD uh, for the Sendero. These are for the normal Sendero, but this is the same. It works. The knuckles are the same. doesn't matter. I really like SSD ones. These have a lot of weight. They don't take up a lot of space in the color. Uh, it's not black. It's not brass. It's this nice satin chrome look color, like black chrome, I think. I don't know. They don't have a specific name for it, but anyway super nice lots of weight not that expensive these are forty dollars for a pair uh, i know there is cheap brass out there but cheap brass is cheap uh, this stuff is very well machined threads are on point everything else is just right it comes with a bearing it has a bigger outer uh, bearing for the drive shaft than the stock one so that's good as well um, since this only costs us 39.99 we only had 25 cent left over from last week i know we cut it close on that one um, so we had $75.25 to spend. We spent $39.99 on these brass knuckles. So we'll have $35.26 cent to roll over to next week, which is good. That's what we need to start kind of stockpiling some money. We're going to do a couple little small things in the next couple weeks. So uh, we're going to do springs because I want to put some softer springs on this thing. Maybe. I don't know. I want to get some, um, I want to put some foams in these tires because I think these tires are good. I think they just need a little bit of foam to kind of, uh, help with side healing it side heals okay but it's not very great uh, so we're going to try that i don't really know which foams i'm going to go with just yet um, these tires these pin seekers are very narrow they're not like any other tire on the market as far as sizing goes so it's going to be kind of tough there you can't shove a big thick foam in there or anti-foam or whatever they're called whatever it is i decide to go with you can't shove them in there because it won't fit and then it'll balloon the tire out the kind of deals you can't do that so so I've already installed one side of this because I wanted to make sure it fit on this with these wheels because these G-Made wheels are, don't really have a bunch of, uh, in the back side of it is very closed. It's not very open like some wheels. So I was kind of, I didn't know how it would work. Wound up working fine. So we're going to put the other side on. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's very simple to do. Actually, it's pretty simple to do if you have the right tools. You don't even have to take the inner fenders off or any of that stuff. So just hang tight, come around, we'll get, get it done. All right, so first off, we're going to take the wheel off. Of course, I'm using this little tool because why not? It's simple. It works. So 
We'll take that off. Use the wheel to hold itself. Take a one and a half. We're going to take these brass extensions off. Again, not everybody will have these, so you ain't really got to worry about that. But you do have to take the stock ones off. They're kind of a pain to take off. Now, the next thing will be to take this rotor off. We're not going to reuse that. Uh, little tip, the other side, one of these was already stripped out. I couldn't use it. I had to use a a screw extractor. Uh, I do suggest buying screw extractors if you're doing this kind of work because sometimes you need it. We will not be reusing these because they are not useful for what we're doing. So, And they're just little pieces of plastic, so they ain't worth the crap anyway. So... Next would be to what I what I suggest doing is just taking the two screws off the top to take the plate off for steering, uh, mainly because you're just going to move it out of the way. You're not going to you're going to reuse that unless you're changing that, and then taking a long. Of course, I fit mine through. It fits through here. It's not very. It's not very. I don't. A, I don't know. It's tough to do, but it'll work if you get it just right. See, and then you loosen it. And you're also not reusing these screws either. Uh, the reason being is the kit comes with little new bushings that you don't reuse the bushings that are in there. Um, I take my ball in 2.0 um, to get here. So you get that. Loosen that. Boom. That's all you got to do there. And of course, raise it up and you take out the bottom screw that holds the knuckle on. Of course, you can't. Let me get this one here. You can see it right closer. So take it out. Again, you're not going to use that again, so it doesn't really matter. Only thing you got to do you do have to reuse this bush in here this bush and you will not reuse so get your flathead screwdriver and go to trying to get this one out that one so I take a I'll take a rag and take this bushing and clean it off get all the junk off of it because over time you know it just gets dirt and debris on it from using it and that's it there wipe that off there take your knuckle the new knuckle put your bushing in the inside here it fits directly in there actually it's kind of loose to be honest but We're going to do that. Not worry about putting the front uh, bearing in just yet, only because it'll just fall out anyway. So, so make sure that's in there good. There we go. All right, so move that out of the way. Take one of your little brass bushings here. Well, that just fell out. So this does make it a little bit aggravating leaving the steering stuff in it, but I mean, most of the time it's fine this one's a little bit more aggravating because of the dual stuff also the camera's in my way so won't be bad for you I'm sure
I remember get it tight and then turn it like a half a turn so it still has a little bit of movement. Now this underside is a little bit tougher, especially when I'm trying to sit here and film, just like you saw there. But I'm going to do it real quick and then get back to it. Hang tight. Again, make sure it's got enough movement. And then just go ahead and set your screws in here in the top part of the knuckle. I start them by hand a little bit if I can. Just mainly because of the brass, you don't want to muck all that up. So take your screwdriver. You can go too tight on these, just remember that because uh, that brass is a soft metal, so it can, can strip out if you're not careful. So then you take your bearing that it comes with. These are just regular old shielded bearings. I should have went and got some rubber bearings, you know, rubber ones or whatever, but it'll be fine. Need to change that to something else. That is not good. Tighten your one and a half mil back up on your hex here. And put your wheel back on. Now I have noticed that um, this particular setup with these extensions, this wheel nut does not get very far into the nylon, if any at all. I gotta work on that, figure out if I can get some shallower nuts with some nylon maybe or something. Tighten that down, good to go. Bearing, I get the knuckle out of the way. As you can see, what I was talking about, see it barely gets into the nylon. It's not good. So, all right. So we got brass knuckles installed on the Sendero SE. Uh, it's good. It's simple little deal. Probably take you 30 minutes to do both sides. Not that bad at all. Also gives you a chance to check other things as well. I found a cross pin in the hex. One of them bent, so it's a good idea to go ahead and change that to something to another one if you've got one laying around. Um, as you see, I've got my winch line hooked up to my pull pal and then my little chain link, bike chain link with a hook on it to hook to the body just to kind of flip me back over. I didn't have that in the last video. I went ahead and did that. But that's it. That gives us, so we'll have $35.26 left over for next week. So that's good. That gives us $100 and $100, it would be $110 and some change. So that's good. Uh, I don't know if we'll use all that next week, but who knows we may so thanks for watching everybody and we will see you next week